presentation, Change Makers Toolkit, Introductory Materials for Advocacy. Um, we have here Daria, Richard, and well, three people. Oh, okay. Two people. Okay, two people. <laughs> okay, great. Um, well, you may begin. We have 39 minutes. Uh, welcome. Uh, the last uh, session slot of Wikimania. Uh, I hope you can still absorb the information we will share here. Um, this is a part uh, introduction to the introductory materials. We'll uh, present what we have to offer you, but also there will be a bit of a test run uh, uh, chance to engage with the materials themselves. Uh, it will be just a small section of what we've produced, so to experience the full toolkit, you're welcome to follow the QR code. It will bring you to the actual full toolkit that we've been working on. Um, so I'm Daria Sibulska, with me Richard Naval. Uh, we both work at Wikimedia UK, where we both um, work within programs, we do partnerships, uh, advocacy, collaborations with external um, organizations, and with that, a lot of change making, actually. And uh, this is not doing anything. Okay, us. Super. So um, the this change maker toolkit. It's a set of materials for uh, people who do advocacy and um, engage with uh, change makings in some way. The um, the thinking for this project was a realization that every Wikimedian actually, in some ways, is a change maker, is an advocate that is trying to shift something, whether it's somebody who talks about copyright change, tries to change how an organization is, uh, like an external organization is thinking about their content or behavior, or even how individuals are thinking about open knowledge and Wikipedia. It's all in some way change making. It's uh, advocating for, for change, system shifting. So, but when we look at how as a movement we think about advocacy, it's fairly um, specialized. It's sort of on high level of like policy change. And it's not really so much addressing the need of somebody who wants to simply shift something in an organization or in a community that they're working with. Um, so that's why we thought that creating something like this to make everybody here realize that there are change makers and give them some information introductory um, materials to help with that activity would be actually really helpful. Um, there is an organization in the UK that's actually really experienced in thinking about supporting change makers and advocates. They're called uh, Sheila Makechny Foundation. And they've actually, for years and years, have been creating the sort of materials to help people who already are doing advocacy do it better, maybe in a more systematic way, more informed, more um, structured way of thinking about the stuff that they already are doing. And I think this actually applies to all of us here. Um, so they were able to uh, work on, develop further, and uh, release the sort of materials that they already have. We've actually wikified them in terms of context and applicability, but essentially this is a lot of their thinking, and the project was funded by uh, Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, this is the intro, and I'll hand over to Richard to actually talk you through the content, and uh, at the end we'll have a chance to actually engage with one of the tools in the toolkit. All right, thank you very much. So in this part, I'll be going over what the toolkit actually covers. So as Dari said, it's a free training resource. Um, and it's aimed at people who bring about change within their organization or communities. <laughs> I think it's okay. uh, this QR code will take you to a toolkit on MetaWiki. It is actually hosted in two places. So it's on MetaWiki, it's also on Wikilearn. Uh, the thing with Wikilearn, it's a great resource, but just for the purposes of today, MetaWiki has a little bit less friction to get into, because you can use it without being logged in. So 
do take a moment to uh, take a photo of that QR code, either for now or later. There are some resources which are really handy in there. Uh, we think that the toolkit, okay, in terms of how long it takes, it depends how you're going about it. If you're going through solo, it's going to be quicker than if you're doing it with a colleague or a group of people. But we've found as well that that kind of collaboration, that working on it together, brings in different perspectives and ideas and you get more out of it. The flip side is it will take longer. So we recommend that each module might take an hour or two, but at the same time, you might end up speed running it. But we do think that taking the time is really helpful with this. And if you do the wiki version, you get to give yourself a lovely barn star at the end of each module to show that you've been engaging with this kind of area. Okay, we have broken down the content into three different modules. Each of those modules gives you some context, uh, takes you through three different uh, approaches or tools which are applicable to that situation. Uh, and it gives you word examples of how these can apply. And then it gives you an exercise where you start to work through it yourself. Uh, this can be something you adapt to your own context, but we've also suggested some things uh, which might help get you started with that. These are the three modules uh, hosted on MetaWiki as they are. Uh, there's an introduction to change making, so explaining what it's all about, uh, analyzing the problem, and communicating for change. So let's have a, a little bit of a closer look at them before we then start engaging with it actively in the session. So we do recommend that you go through these in order, but you can dip in and out, whichever works for you really. The first module is all about change making. So it's laying a bit of the groundwork and explaining just how important it is. Because um, it might be something which well, we think that the, the Wikimedia movement maybe doesn't always think about what they're doing in terms of change making, but it's a really powerful thing to be doing. So in a sense, the ideas of uh, advocacy and campaigning, they're not words you will find in the mouths of many Wikipedians because of how it might interact with neutral point of view. But there's a lot of advocacy and campaign to be done within organizations and with organizations and around um, the legal uh, culture of particular countries. So for us at Wikimedia UK, uh, we advocate for organizations to change their licensing. We're also working on uh, legal frameworks and trying to make sure our viewpoint is heard when there are issues around copyright and openness. So it covers how change comes about, what are the drivers of change, uh, and especially what uh, people are involved with that. And it's also looking at uh, analyzing what your potential allies are and who your potential opponents are as well. If you're bringing about change, you need to bring people with you, but there may be some people who don't want that change to go through. And so it helps you think about who those people are, what motivates them, and how you approach that. And it's a very useful way of thinking about how to direct your resources. One of your most important resources, of course, being your own time and energy. Uh, and speaking of that, it outlines some useful ways of working. So it reminds us that the people who are most vocally opposed to the change we want to bring about might not be people we can win over. So we might want to concentrate on people who are more open-minded, but we do still want to win people over. Module number two uh, helps you look at a particular problem, a particular situation, and start making progress towards resolving that problem. Uh, it helps you work out what those methods are, uh, and importantly, finding ways that people can help you Bring about change. Um, a lot of wiki stuff, wiki campaigning, can be quite a solo effort. Uh, 
So one of the important things is to remember that the more people you involve, the more capacity there is. It's quite straightforward, of course, but it means that we need to recognise not just when we need more capacity, but when people are out there and we can help them out. Uh, and it talks about some planning tools as well. So module number three is about communication. So there are loads of resources about uh, communication, but this is specifically for um, change making. And it helps you work out what groups you want to be talking to and how you frame your messages and how to make it, for want of a better word, impactful, make it resonate with people. I think in the Wikimedia movement, um, we're very good at particularly focusing on, um, say, the, the facts of a situation, trying to back things up with data. Other groups are very good at bringing through the, the, um, the emotion with a campaign. And it's really important to make sure that those are always there, both of those, so that we're speaking to wide groups and wide audiences with our messaging. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the tools uh, that's covered in the toolkit. This is from the very first module, and it's called the Social Change Grid. This was developed by Sheila McKeshney, so drawing on all their experience with change making and campaigning. And they've been working out this Social Change Grid. And it gives you two axes. So one is uh, formal and informal groups and the other one is uh, societal and individual groups and action and it's a really useful way to think about particular activities within that uh, what groups uh, can you be working with it's useful to think of um, a previous campaign you've maybe been involved with and are familiar with and look at where the different groups fit within the grid and see what gaps appear. Um, I, in the process of being involved with this, um, I realised that I had been involved in change-making activities. Um, so that was very interesting to think about in that way. And as I started going through it, I realised that in some of the stuff we've been doing, some of the campaigns we've been working on, there are particular gaps. And ideally, we want to have as good a coverage in this grid as possible. Make sure that you're speaking to different groups. Um, because it also reflects the, the structures of power. So towards the uh, formal and societal end of the spectrum, we've actually got the corner, which is institutional. Top right, we've got public. Bottom left, we have personal, and top left, we have community. So different kind of groups. Um, and it may not always be possible to reach all four corners, all four sectors, but the better coverage we have, the more we can bring about change. Because the community and the personal can be used to influence the institutional, for example. So let's have a look at some of the the ways this grid might be populated in general terms. Okay, so with the public sector, or sorry, the public area of the grid on the public sector, uh, this, this essentially boils down to public pressure. You're trying to create a groundswell of opinion and bring that to bear on people with uh, the power to make the change that you want to happen. And so it's looking at stuff like uh, interacting with mass media, uh, social movements, strikes as well. Now, some of these may not be applicable directly to Wikimedia, um, but it's really useful to think about what kind of options there are. Um, working with influence, influencers, for example, and making use of social media. Uh, in the bottom right there's speaking truth to power because that's you are speaking to the institutions the ones who hold all the power and the ones you want to actually bring about the change uh, so this comes down to stuff like uh, lobbying uh, policy developments uh, 
working with potentially think tanks, finding out what groups are out there that have the power and influence. It might not always be obvious. Sometimes it may be if there are governmental departments, but there are also other groups with power within that. Uh, in the top left, we have collective interest. This is where we're tapping into uh, the community, but in an informal setting. So this is where we've got um, local activist groups, uh, even stuff like WhatsApp groups, methods of communicating and connecting that are essentially grassroots. Uh, and then people who are organizing within the community. These are really powerful things, but also very distributed, um, which in a sense also feels very Wikimedian. And in the bottom left, we have the individual, the uh, formal as well. So this comes down to the personal level of action, where we're looking at um, people's first-hand experience and how that's being communicated, making the case for bringing about change. And using one particular example from the world of Wikimedia, uh, this is from the uh, She Said campaign with Wikiquotes. Uh, we looked at this as a great example of a public-facing campaign to highlight the uh, lack of gender diversity on Wikiquotes um, and do something about it. Uh, so there was a social media campaign, there was, that was picked up by the media, um, and there was potentially working with institutions. So, you know, you can talk to universities and get them using their networks to start adding stuff to Wikiquote. Uh, and some of this stuff can potentially lead to other things, hence we've got the arrow there. So sharing quotes on social media um, prompted people to start editing it led to the personal action. So we have some excellent A4 handouts, which I will start passing can you explain the oh, or I can pass and you can explain the task. So for context, um, we're going to set you a challenge. Uh, the idea is that in this scenario, we're looking slightly potentially outside the world of Wikimedia. Um, we want to think about what action you can take, uh, what groups you would engage with to bring about change, um, positive change with climate. Think on a, a local level. So for example, um, you want to encourage uh, your council, your local government to adopt green policies. Uh, that can be to do with traffic calming, uh, waste disposal, um, and energy efficiency. So that's what we're going to look at as an example. Essentially, environments in the local area to you. And we want to think about what groups, what kind of personal and institutional activity you could be doing with that. Um, when working out what the example would be, I was initially wondering, is environments a little bit too removed from Wikimedia. But I've been struck by how much discussion there has been of climate and environment at this Wikimedia. Um, and it's, it's rather a pressing concern. And in the world of Wikimedia, we are in a position where we can share information. So I think it does work rather well. I would recommend uh, working in pairs and having a conversation with the person next to you and talking about what groups you'd be looking to work with. Maybe not necessarily just work with, but bring pressure on. Who are the uh, people with power in the, the bottom right that you want to either encourage to do a thing or perhaps even partner with if you can convince them? Uh, so we want to hit all of these areas if we can. If we can't, that's worth noting as well, because that might be an area where someone else can help out. Um, we did have pens. They were helpfully tidied away. Um, so I'm very sorry about that. I hope you have your own writing devices. Uh, 
We've got 20 minutes left in the session. Should we give it 10? Okay. So we'll give you about 10 minutes to have a go with the, uh, the blank sheets. We are walking around, and if you've got questions, uh, do give us a shout. And maybe one last thing about the grid from like the experience of Sheila Makechny, like the change, I'm sure most of you know, it's quite messy. So, you know, on the uh, second slide, there is like kind of a neat um, movement, but normally how it happens, and I think on our resources, there is like an example of like a real change that mm -hmm. has happened. And it's all kind of different things influencing each other, like everything's yeah. kind of connected. So it's about kind of looking at the system and the messiness of shifting things. But like Richard said, I think starting with like jotting some of the things down on the uh, grid is a, is a good starting point of reflection. Yeah. yeah. No one? Or like, you know, you can, huh. On the QR code, there is, the, the examples are also there, but maybe, hopefully this is visible. Yes, if you do follow the QR code, it's in the first module, uh, and it should be uh, essentially the second page along in there. Ah, it will be helpfully labeled the social change grid. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the right page. So I would say if an idea takes you, by all means, pursue that, follow the interest. Um, I was thinking climate change in your local area, as in like the way you live, but right now local is Wikimania. So why not apply to that situation? Is there a possible way with that?
Right. It's lovely to hear the murmur of conversation in the room, um, but it has been 10 minutes. I want to make sure that we're not leaving the people who are online stranded. Um, so uh, I was wondering at this stage, is anyone ready to share reflections about what they've been talking about? So are there any gaps in your grid? Um, how populated is it looking? Do we have lots of different groups you could potentially either work with or try and influence, or is it just one or two? So can we have any raised hands for people to share what they've been thinking about? Thank you. I used Yolanda's idea about making Wikimania more sustainable. I thought that was a really fun case study. And um, I did not come up with a lot of actors for the public pressure, sort of top right uh, corner. Uh. But I do think it's a really fun case study because there's so many different like micro campaigns that you could run to influence people. And as we know in this movement, there's some people who on particular topics are very passionate and really well regarded. And so you can sort of prep them up as influencers. Yeah. Um, so I did end up with a lot in the bottom left column for personal individuals to work with. Of course, there's specific project groups or mailing lists that you could target. And even for the institutional one, you can break it down and go with the organizing team, uh, perhaps the conference venue, of course, the foundation. But even then, within the foundation, for example, you can go uh, at a, to a really granular level and try to speak directly with Mariana Iskander, for example, uh, or with different teams. Yeah. Thank you. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, the main list is an excellent suggestion. I guess that's Wiki's equivalent of the neighborhood WhatsApp group. Yeah. <laughs> um, and interesting that you had some gaps in the, the top right. So uh, the, the group I was talking to, would you be prepared to share your thoughts on the grid as well, since you're working on something similar? Thank you. Good. So I, I just uh, try to take notes while the two of you were speaking. And um, so I'm going to the upper right grid box which is about public pressure and um, um, we kind of looked at um, various things like um, uh, traveling green power using open software trash uh, the whole thing around hosting and um, um, I kind of put that in there and I'm kind of thinking out aloud, why did I put that up to the left into a public thing? Yeah, um, maybe you can help me a bit. Yeah. It's one of those things where it can float a bit. So something can start as um, being quite uh, individual, like someone could start a hashtag about seeing the recycling bins around the vin venue, which builds into uh, more of a collective activity and could potentially get picked up <coughs> by the media. You, you never know. Um, perhaps uh, recycling bins won't make headline news, but the idea being that you can progress from the individual side through to the uh, more community societal side. Um, and we were talking as well about with individual action, um, whether that's choosing different modes of transport, that might sit in different parts of the grid, depending on what factors are involved mm. there. If it's your own personal experience, like you want to uh, travel uh, by sustainable transport because you are personally concerned about the environment, that very much sits in the individual action area. But if you're being incentivized by your institution, um, that might sit somewhere else. So it is quite fluid, but I think it's useful to see where the gaps mm. are. We, so. we came up with one more um, um, speaking truth to power, uh, which is uh, legal, legal, uh, local legislation policies and mm -hmm. also European policies around uh, green festivities or m m organizing events in a more green sense. So there yeah. is already um, 
let's say, not only suggestions but laws in place yeah. to be able to look at. So. so I hope that was a useful exercise. Um, the idea being that this may be something you can try in your own uh, context as well. Are there particular things you want to be uh, working on or are already working on, but it might help to look at in a different way. So we are very close to the end, two and a half minutes. So hopefully that's long enough for you to get the QR code if you haven't already. Um, and we would love if you could uh, maybe try it on learn.wiki. Uh, you do need an account there. So there's a couple of extra buttons, but it's a really good learning platform. Um, and importantly, your feedback on this as a concept and any practical details will be really useful. We want to continue adapting this and working on it. With that, first of all, thank you very much. And finally, do you have any questions or feedback on the toolkit? Okay. In that In, you know, of what you've heard so far, obviously there's like a whole toolkit like Richard was uh, saying. What I'm quite um, proud of that we did was we took the materials from Sheila Makechny Foundation, the sort of uh, rel uh, general agnostic uh, tools for, for change making and the whole toolkit is consists of the sort of tools we've uh, we've just tried and uh, socialize them in a Wikimedia context. So we chose some of kind of well-known campaigns or approaches like the blackout, probably mm -hmm. some like changes in the organizations and shown how our activities in the Wikimedia world actually map to the world of campaigning and uh, change making. So I think it's quite beautiful to see how our work actually is um, in dialogue with the field of change making in general. So I hope you enjoy the examples as well in the toolkit. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much to uh, Sheila McKeshney for sharing their valuable knowledge and insight in this area. And Lucy Moore, who I realise I didn't mention before, but she was very helpful in adapting this content as well. So mm. we hope you find this useful. Thank you.